Hey everybody, welcome back to Whiteboard Finance. My name is Marco and I'm here to help you master your money and build your wealth. I just wanna thank Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. Today's video is actually going to be about five things that you should never do with your money. So we've all made dumb financial decisions in the past. Some of these actually have a much bigger impact on our wealth than some others do. However, they're all going to be a net negative and we'll talk about those in this video. So in this video, I'm going to give you five things never to do with your money. And as always, I'll give you my thoughts at the end. Stay tuned. Number one is credit card interest. Don't ever put yourself in a position to where you have to pay credit card interest debt. That is some of the highest percentage interest debt that you will ever pay. Do not use a credit card if you're not able to pay it off in full every month. Most cards have a variable interest rate plus prime, which will get you into an average APR, meaning annual percentage rate of 19.6%. So if you pay off 19.6%, that is a guaranteed risk-free, tax-free rate of return. If you told me a place where I can get a guaranteed 19.6% rate of return, I would put every single penny that I have into that investment. That's the same thing as paying off credit card debt. So let's take a look at a quick example here. So we have a person named Mike who's accrued a balance of $2,000 on his credit card. So his payment, he's paying the bare minimum of $60 a month. So if you do simple interest and assuming our interest rate is 20% for simple math, $2,000 times 20% divided by 12, meaning his monthly payment, gets you at $33.33 in interest. So his principal repayment, if you just take 60 minus 33, you're going to be at $26.67 a month going towards the principal, which will then turn his balance into $1,973.33, okay? It's just 2,000 minus his principal payment. If you were to make minimum payments on this $2,000 debt, meaning this $60 a month, how long do you think it would take uh, Mike to pay off this debt? Well, the answer is it would take 15 years and $4,241 to pay off $2,000 in debt. That's number one, never pay credit card interest, especially the minimum balance. If you do accrue it, knock it out. Number two is don't play the lotto. So I know a lot of people that give lottery tickets, you know, single dollar scratch offs here or there as gifts during the holidays. Uh, my mom even does this, but she's not a regular lottery player. Uh, my point is, is because lottery is literally a tax on poor people. Uh, so what do I mean by that? So demographics show that lower household incomes play lottery at a higher rate. Much of this money goes towards government initiatives, making this a voluntary tax on poor people. Uh, so typically these, this money goes towards roads, schools, government initiatives, things like that. However, they have a very low chance of trying to win this significant sum of money. Uh, they're ultimately funding the government, which is okay if you know that you're doing that. So there's a CNBC article that states that the average lottery player uh, typically spends $86 a month on these lottery tickets, which is right around $1,000 a year. So let me ask you this, what would you do with $1,000 a year instead of buying these lottery tickets? Well, there's a lot you can do with it. You can go on vacation, uh, you can invest the difference, you can put it towards a down payment on a rental property, uh, you can put it into a dividend portfolio. There's a million different things that you can use for that $1,000 as opposed to gambling. Um, if you know that you're going to gamble, if you're going to Las Vegas as, for fun, set aside a certain budget and don't go past that budget. Think of it as an entertainment fund. Uh, and just a little fun fact here, the current jackpot for the current Powerball, the odds of winning it are one in 292 million. So think about that. Uh, we, before we get into number three, let's very quickly get into the Simply Safe spot right now. Simply Safe on. Simply Safe is an incredibly effective, reliable home security system that will make sure your home is safe. You just order it online or over the phone and it's delivered right to your home and you set it up yourself in under an hour. You just stick the sensors exactly where you need them and from there your home is professionally monitored 24 seven if anything happens. They'll make sure the police gets called. They've got sensors to cover every window, room and door and plus a lot of great extras like water sensors, temperature sensors, and HD cameras. You can see a sensor right there. It's all really easy to use and you get around the clock protection for just 50 cents a day with no contracts. They've even won US News and World Report's best overall home security system of 2020. So the reason I chose to get Simply Safe is because I believe in the product, otherwise I wouldn't have them as a sponsor on the channel. This is my entire business right here, you guys. You can see the video portion and also the audio portion right here. 
This is a company that I believe in and I use daily. The setup process was super easy. You basically just install the home base right here, pretty much where your door is. This is the door to my studio. You got this right here. You can set it if you're at home, if you're away. And this whole process took about 40 minutes, if I remember correctly. Um, you just stick the sensors, which you can see right here. This is a sensor for the window. So if this window is opened while it's armed, that'll actually notify the police. Same thing with this right here. This is a microphone that knows when glass shatters, that'll actually notify the police as well. So you can see here, this is the base station. Um, this is kind of like the brain of the operation that talks to the thing by the door over there. And then you can arm it with the keypad. You also have other things like temperature sensors. So if um, you live in a cold climate or you live in a hot climate, um, this will actually prevent your pipes from freezing if your HVAC or your heat goes out. Um, so basically, you can see here that um, if you want to actually look at the sensors and how they work, if I were to open this door right here, you can hear that right there beeping. That's that sensor right there. So basically, this whole property is covered. So I actually have a funny story, and let me uh, disarm this. I'm going to get this off camera real quick. Uh, my wife didn't know I installed this, and when she came into the studio, <laughs> the cops actually came because she didn't know the code. So it absolutely does work. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys the system. I'm still using it a year later, and I'm still incredibly happy with Simply Safe. Number three is never flaunt your money or don't show off your riches or wealth, okay? Stealth wealth is the way. The reason for this is because it attracts the wrong things in life. Uh, so the first couple things that we talked about in this video were more like defensive, like don't play the lottery, you know, save your money, things like that. This is going to fix your offense, okay? Don't be too offensive with uh, showing off your money. The reason for that is because it attracts the wrong things in life. It attracts gold diggers, uh, people that are only interested in being with you uh, because you have money. It attracts fake friends. Uh, you're the guy that's always paying for bottle service when you go out. You're always buying everyone dinner and everyone's just smiling and, oh, you're the best. But when that money dries up, trust me, those friends leave. Uh, and then finally, what can you do for me? It creates that what can you do for me attitude. Hey, I'm only associated with uh, Mike, for example, the guy with the $2,000 credit card balance, uh, because maybe he can do something for me, right? So stealth wealth prevents all this. It also prevents people from thinking uh, you're rich, so you're snobby, right? Oh, this person's rich, they must be snobby, which isn't usually the case. Uh, you're rich because you're cutthroat in business. You have no morals, which is not usually the case. Uh, or you're rich because you're a trust fund baby whose parents funded your entire existence, right? Um, so you don't want people thinking about that. I mean, if you do, that's fine, but um, you wanna be able to create your own legacy uh, with your own effort and value that you bring to the table. So what I would say to fix this is live a life rich in experiences, uh, kind of like traveling, learning a new language, cuisine, you know, things like that, as opposed to living a life rich in material possessions, if that makes sense. Number four goes without saying, never not invest your money. So I know people who literally have zero dollars invested in anything. Uh, it's not because they can't afford to, it's because they simply don't. They don't think that they need to do it. They're living on that uh, debt consumer driven hamster wheel, right? So the thing about in not investing, or the thing about investing, I guess, is that you combat inflation. Remember all my videos that say savers are losers? Well, savers are literally losing money due to increased inflation and minimized purchasing power uh, because of the low interest rates in our high yield savings accounts, right? So here's a quick example. If you saved $200 a month at 0.5% in a high yield savings account, and I say that in quotes because uh, people aren't even getting 0.5% right now, it's much lower, uh, you would have $63,000 after 25 years. Now, if you take that same $200 a month at a uh, modest 6%, whether it's invested in a total stock market fund or you know, S&P 500 fund, for example, uh, at the end of 25 years, you would have $131,000. It is a much bigger difference combating inflation and retaining your purchasing power. Uh, if you wanna learn more about inflation, check out the video I just did with Robert Breedlove. He talks about all the implications of an inflationary monetary system. Uh, and then finally, uh, by investing, you create a safety net outside of your emergency fund. So you have a thick portfolio, thick with three C's, not two C's, like extra thick, like, like this right here, like thick, three C's, bro, that's thick. Uh, I'm probably gonna edit that out. No, I'll leave it in. 
No, I, uh, we'll see. My eye really itches, man. These allergies are killing me. Okay, maybe I'll keep it in. So having a thick portfolio can help weather any of life's storms. So you have this in a taxable account, meaning you can access it at any time. Yes, you may have to pay uh, short-term or long-term capital gains taxes, depending on if you're up or down in your portfolio. But at the same time, it's still very liquid. Uh, and not investing for retirement, it can be one of the worst things that you can do for yourself and your future family. So make sure that you don't not invest, okay? Okay, finally, number five is never invest more than you can afford to lose, especially in this environment that we're in where everything seems super frothy right now, right? So investing is simply risk assessment, okay? So investors are compensated for the amount of risk that we take on. So think about it. If I'm investing in a uh, unicorn startup that has very little chance of succeeding, I need, to, I need to take on a certain level of expected compensation to be able to do that. If I'm investing in a municipal bond that has a very low chance of defaulting, uh, then I should be expecting a very small amount of compensation for that as well. So investors are compensated for their risk and given the environment that we're in right now with stocks, crypto, 0% uh, interest rates, the housing market, all that good stuff, um, you need to be very weary of knowing how much you can afford to invest or how much you can afford to lose. So why is that? So you're saying, Marco, why not? Why shouldn't I just bet the farm on uh, Dogecoin, right? Well, because it'll prevent you from investing again, not only from a loss of capital, uh, but it's also kind of going to scar you with you know PTSD of losing everything on some risky bet that it'll turn you off from investing and building your wealth for the future. It may potentially hurt your family life uh, in terms of, hey, what if you you know, invested away your emergency fund, for example, and something happens. Uh, it hurts your chances of growing your wealth over the long term. And then it also hurts your mental health, uh, for real. I know a lot of people that, um, you know, when real estate was booming, it got crushed in 2007, 2008. I know a lot of people that affected negatively, uh, they resorted to drinking, drugs, things like that. Uh, so that's number five. Let's get into my thoughts to wrap all this up on what not to do with your money. Okay, finally, my thoughts to end this video with two quick points. Number one, money is simply a tool. Uh, if you don't have a robust toolbox, meaning a lot of money, and you only have a hammer, well, everything's gonna look like a nail, right? You may wanna uh, YOLO your life savings into stuff that's extremely risky, and then guess what? You end up back at square zero, okay? So use your money as a tool. Um, try to acquire as many monetary units as possible. That way you can diversify and grow your wealth over time. Uh, don't live for the sake of simply acquiring money or saving money or hoarding money. That's stupid. That's a, ter that's a terrible way to go through life, in my personal opinion. Use it as a tool to build wealth, use it as a tool to protect you and your loved ones, and use it as a tool to potentially give to others if you're able to do so. Uh, number two, money goes where it's treated best. So if you're someone that's, you know, playing the lotto, gambling it away, going to a slot machine, you know, all the stupid stuff, um, money goes where it's treated best. So the people that are providing the slot machines, the people that are uh, providing the ability for you to give them your money, those that is where money is going to go. It's where it's treated best. So what that means is uh, a fool and his money are quickly departed, meaning that if you're sitting here low in, YOLOing your life savings on stuff that has very low chance of uh, going to the moon, quote unquote, then you deserve the outcome that you get. So a lot of people don't want to hear that, but money goes where it's treated best, uh, whether that's someone who knows how to save it, earn it, spend it properly, that's where money will go. So as always, I hope you got value out of this video. I will be launching uh, course one out of my school. I decided not to launch the whole school at once because there are gonna be multiple individual courses. Uh, it takes a lot of effort to get at least one of these things out. So I'm gonna be launching them one by one. And then when I have all the courses available, I'll be offering either like a bulk discount or a monthly membership to the entire school itself. If you wanna sign up for that, check out the link below. And as always, have a prosperous day. So I got a buddy, I hope he doesn't watch this video. He loves playing slots. I'm thinking to myself, dude, it is literally a computer program designed to keep the casino in business. So anybody that plays slots, please comment down below. What is your like, what are you thinking about when you play slots? Like, do you really think that this is a long term winning strategy? Like, you think these like casinos just have, you know, millions of dollars in properties and uh, maintenance and overhead? and they think you're gonna like put in a game that they're gonna make you win at. So I just, I don't get it. So if someone that plays slots, please comment down below, why do you choose to play slots? Thank you.